Hello everybody, Napkin99 here, and welcome back to the Pixelmon Let's Play series. Today, we are doing a lot of different things. Um, the first of which, I went ahead and like sat in our village over there for a little bit and picked up some quests because the Galarian Canto Bird quests give the new charms that we were talking about a few episodes ago. So the Catching Charm the XP charm and the Mark charm. Um, I saw this on Reddit and someone in the comments also told me. So for the Galarian bird here for, I believe Zapdos is this one. The first thing we have to do is defeat a strike Pokemon, which is going to be a bit difficult. So strike Pokemon only spawn in savannas when it's storming, when it's night, except for a couple that spawn in a couple other biomes, but also when it's storming at night. So, we're going to use this Quagsire here to make it rain, so that hopefully at some point that will turn into a storm, hopefully closer to nighttime. But it should keep it raining for quite a bit, so we'll just leave that going. Um, the other two quests I got, I don't believe these are the Galarian forms. These are just the regular ones, so we're going to do these two, since we have them. I don't know if... The other ones are going to be blocked until we complete these or not, but I sat there for a bit after getting these and wasn't able to get the Galarian form quest, so we will try these first. So the first goal in both of these is to find an orb, which, oh, I wonder where we could have some of those. <laughs> so I think if we just take one of these and drop them, because we have four extra ones, including the three we already have filled. Yeah. So... This now moves our quest on. Infuse the orb with fire, infuse the orb with ice. So we're going to grab a second one of these. I worry that we may have to fill up a second one of these. Maybe what's happening here. But we can always go to the XP grinder and do that. We got our orb of frozen souls here. And orb of fiery souls. And let's see, yeah, defeat 375 Pokemon. Back to grinding. So, uh, I don't know what's happening, but I completely filled this Orb of Frozen Souls by defeating 375 Pokemon. And neither of the quests that I've defeated even won. So, I think they're broken. I see a lot of posts on Reddit about quests being broken, so it's kind of upsetting because that took quite a bit um, anyways we're still waiting for a storm to start here it's been raining this whole time um, just haven't had the storm yet so eventually hopefully we'll get a storm and defeat a strike pokemon and hopefully that quest works because that's the important one i think so it is currently storming and it is nighttime at least i think it's still storming and i hope it is um, i found out Apparently, when Kyogre uses the ability to make it rain, because his ability allows him to do it no matter what, it forces it to storm. So, even if we don't get it this night, next night I can force it to storm again at nighttime, and we'll have a chance to get our strike form Boltund. Because I'll so discover that's the only one that actually spawns in the savanna. I forgot when doing my research, I picked that one because it's most likely to spawn. I think it's like a 0 0.5 spawn rate compared to a lot of the others, which is 0 0.05. So this one's about 10 times more likely than those. So we'll see what we can find. Aha! Uh -huh. We have finally found it. And I'm going to get catching Pokemon on me just in case the Zapdos thing spawns immediately after. But we have to kill this, unfortunately, because it looks pretty cool. I'd like to catch it. But we are going to kill it and hope that this quest works. Got some free Pokeballs. Uh, cool. It didn't work. So uh, I was bummed out from the quest thing not working, but I was going around doing some raids while thinking of things to do for the episode when I caught this beautiful thing right here. It's a shiny Suicune. We got it in a den. 
Um, I was actually kind of panicking when we got in there because I wanted to make sure we actually were able to beat it so we could have a chance to catch it. And of course I just used a Master Ball since we only got one chance to catch it from that. So that is awesome because this is one of my favorite legendaries, so to have a shiny form of it is even better. So I was actually smelting some iron I got as well, and we got another Meltan, and we caught it, and it didn't turn into a Ditto, so now we have both of these guys in here. So although we still can't do the quest, we still can get the three birds themselves. So we're going to do Zapdos first here, since this is the closest one to our base. So I've got our Orb of Static Souls here, and let's put it in, and starts the fight immediately. I forgot to put my... Uh, Breloom first. And we finally got him. That took a lot of Pokeballs. I think we had 80 something before, so this took about 30 timer balls to catch this guy. <laughs> Alrighty, we are at our Frozen Shrine here now, and I've got my Breloom first this time, <laughs> so we don't start with our Talon Flame again. And let's get to it. Alright, take two, if we can get out of these blocks. Because it killed our things pretty quick here. Let's actually grab our Tapu Lele. Because we can get this one down to half health at least using nature's madness make sure that's the right move so we don't kill it because this thing nearly one shots all of our catchers it's the unfortunate thing about our catching team it's pretty much all weak to flying and fire type so mole trace especially is going to be really bad <laughs> so we'll do one more of these just to get it a little bit lower and maybe we'll just try throw throwing pokeballs at it until it kills our tapu lele so that we can get a free switch onto one of our actual catchers. Or we can get a critical capture. That works too. Okay then. <laughs> that was much easier than the Zepdos. And here we are at the Fiery Shrine, starting with our Tapu Lele this time. To go over the same strategy as last time. So we're going to Nature's Madness this fool, get him a little low. And we'll just get him like that, I guess. Alright, Tapu Lele is our new catching Pokemon. <laughs> so we've got all three of our birds now, and since we're here, let's take a whole look at our Legendary board, because it is really starting to fill out here. We don't have... All too many left. We definitely have much over half now, so we're definitely getting there. So our next project for today is to get some raid dens moved over to our Mew farm. So I've already gone ahead and laid out a path here, and each one goes to a raid den, and I've got the little ramp to make them go up. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a little time lapse here of making them move at the movement plates. So, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
So we have finally completed our raid den farm here. That kind of mixes with our Mew farm to help us catch Mew a little faster as well. That took a very long time, probably combined between moving all the dens and setting up all the legs over there to get it over here. It's probably close to six, seven hours of work to move these 33 dens. But we got it done. And you may have seen the time lapse. I fell a lot and took quite a few rides on the track myself. So now I'm going to AFK here for a little bit and get some more Mews. I believe I have 13 right now. I probably want to get at least 10 more. And then we're going to see if we can clone those into some Max IV Dittos. So we are back home here. We've got our 23 Mews that we're going to clone. This took quite a while to get. We also got a, another Type Null, it's somewhere else in my PC. Um, but that's the only other Legendary we were able to catch from our Raid Dens. We did get one Mew from them, and then we had a bunch of Type Nulls and Silvery spawn. We had a few Zerudes, a few Tapus spawn as well, but we weren't able to catch any of those. Um, we also managed to get another Tidal Bell, actually dropped from one of the Legendary Raid Dens that we did. So we have two of those now. But anyways, I have got seven cloning machines here. I'm hoping this is enough. Um, I should have resources to make more. I have this blocked off so we don't get any other Pokemon wandering in here. And I've got a bunch of iron. I believe this is enough for the amount of Mews that we have. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to grab our first Mew here. We're going to replace our Tapu. And we're just going to plop this down, and we're going to get started cloning these into dittos. This is it. Our last clone. Over an hour, three stacks of iron blocks, over a stack of repeat balls, seven cloning machines, and a million hmm, 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 later. Our final clone. Alrighty. We now have 61 dittos from this, and so that's not including the ones we had before. So there's quite a few dittos here. We also got this hidden ability Mewtwo. This is our second one I saw it use on Nerve right at the beginning, so I figured we can lose our uh, catch combo for that since there's only two in. So that was a pretty rare thing we got. And then one of these ones, this one actually, we got a hidden ability ditto as well, just one. So yeah, that's pretty good. So I've got a few Mewtwo's around here still, so I'm going to see if I can catch any of these. And I will see you in a minute. Alright, that's it. I'm getting my Hydreigon. I'm killing them all. I'm killing them all. If anyone couldn't tell, I really don't care all that much for Mewtwo. Well guys, disaster has struck yet again. So it looks like either the catch combos aren't working or they don't count for the dittos because they come from the cloning machine. Because out of all of these dittos, we did not get one that had more than one max IV even. So that is rather unfortunate. And especially to my iron supply. <laughs> But anyways, we have a ton of dittos now, so we can do a lot of ditto ditto breeding. I think most IVs we have a max one of now. Maybe not a defense one, actually, but yeah. So we can breed these all together and eventually get our max IV dittos that we want. But this is going to stop us dead in our tracks with our libero score bunny that we were going to do, because I was planning on doing that using these dittos, but we can't do that. And I was also planning on doing the same thing with Amora, because one of you guys in the comments, LZ Prata, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, pointed out that I can use the ability patch to actually get the hidden ability on the Pokemon I want. So I just need to get a max IV one of these, and then we can use the ability patch on that, because I really do not want to go looking for more fossils. And speaking of user comments, another comment from the user ShiningBanana69 asked 
if we could use iron golems to make an iron farm by using the zombie villagers from the village that we found back in episode 5. Um, so I actually tried that out in creative mode. When you turn zombie villagers back into villagers, they turn into the Pixelmon villagers, which have some of the same mechanics as regular villagers, but spawning iron golems is not one of them, unfortunately. So we can't do that. So all of the iron that we have to use, we have to mine for. Just like all the iron we use for cloning our muse. But anyways, I'm going to have to go ahead and end the episode here. I'm sorry it took so long to get out. I've had a busy couple weeks and a lot of this stuff took quite a long time to do. But I hope you enjoyed. Um, also, in the comments, let me know what your favorite type of Pokemon is because I am curious. And it also may have a use in a future episode. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.